This is the Ulanzi Stream Deck D200. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what it is and how to use it. And I'll also show how it can help improve your content creation, live streaming, or even just your general day-to-day -day workflow. Thanks to Ulanzi for sponsoring today's video. So what exactly does this product do? Well, essentially, it's this small unit that looks kind of like a keyboard and gives you 13 customizable keys that link to your computer. It makes tasks very easy because, for example, instead of clicking Control shift escape to pull up your task manager, you can just click one button here and you're done. And guys, there are a ton of other ways to use this device to make your tasks even easier, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now guys, let's start here by getting into the product itself, and it comes in a pretty standard box with a display of the D200 on the front, and then flip it to the back, you've got some instructions on how to set up the D200, which we'll get into here in a minute. And then of course, once you get inside the box, they, they keep it pretty simple. We've got the manual, we've got the D200 unit itself, of course the stand, and last but not least, a USB cord so you can plug the unit into your computer and actually use it. Now guys, taking a closer look at the unit itself here, we have our 13 customizable buttons here on the front and each button has a nice little thunk to it. It's not not bad at all. And then flipping to the back, we've got these little these little strips here. You can peel off the, the plastic backing and then set it down and it won't slide around. Now I haven't taken mine off yet because I actually mount it inside of this case here, which I'll show you here in a minute how to set that up. And then of course we also have a USB-C port here on the back where you can plug it into your computer. Uh, but guys, this thing overall has a very nice, it's got a hefty feel to it, but it's not, it's not too heavy, you know? So you can take it portably from, you know, maybe you have a computer at home and you also have a computer at your office and you want to, you know, take this thing back and forth and set it up in both places. You can do that because it's pretty small and portable. And like I said, I actually use this stand here so I can use it at my computer at a nice little angle. So let me go ahead and show you how to set that up. So basically we take our USB cable, slide in the USB-C end through this little hole in the back. And once you pull that through, you plug it into the USB-C port on the back of the unit. And it honestly just kind of slides in here like so and just sits there nicely. So you put it on your table now. And so boom, it's at this nice angle now so you can actually see what the buttons are saying, what they show you. Um, and obviously you got your cut your cable on the other end that you plug into your computer. So guys, let's go ahead and uh, hop over to our computer now. And I'll show you how to set this thing up and how to actually use it. Now guys, hopping over here to my PC, I'm gonna first start by showing you how to use the D200 and kind of what features it comes with, how you can utilize those features. And then I'll show you how I personally use it in my workflow on a daily basis. So let's go ahead and start by basically plugging in the unit here. So you saw the USB cord earlier, you just need to make sure you have one side plugged into the, your, your, your unit here, obviously, and then into your PC. And then next we'll hop over to our computer. And once you have the unit plugged in, you wanna to go to the Ulanzi website and download the software. So they have it for Windows, for Mac, whatever you got. So I already have it downloaded for Windows and we'll come over here and this is the app here. So it's pretty basic, pretty simple to use. I'm going to start by showing you a new profile so we can kind of start from scratch and show you how it works. So we'll go to profile one, which is which is blank. And the first thing you'll notice is it kind of, uh, it, it's just it's just blank here and emulates what the uh, device looks like itself. So it's, it's pretty straightforward and kind of what you see is what you get. And guys, here on the left-hand side, it essentially shows you all of the buttons you can drag over and use for your customizable buttons here. So let me just go ahead and start by showing you a website. So basically you drag it, you drop it, and as you can see here on the device now, it shows you this website, and you can type in anything you want. So we'll go with just a, I don't know, we'll keep it simple and go Google. So I type in google.com, and we have our website here. You can actually click on here and also select icons. So I'll just click the, you know, let's just select a random icon. This one, sure. So that, that doesn't match Google at all, but it's just, it's an icon. You can basically put any icon you want there. But basically once that's set up, you come over here, click on this button, and you can see it pulls up Google immediately. So very simple. I'll go ahead and close it and show you again. Click on it, pulls it up. And that's essentially the benefit of this whole device is you can simplify your workflow. You know, instead of clicking multiple buttons or typing in google.com, you can just click one button and it takes you there. And next up is one of the ones I use the most, which is opening an app. So we'll drag that over as well. And you can basically search for whatever app on your computer you want. I'm gonna put in Chrome. So I'll go, go over here and click on the chrome.exe file. It'll link it. And basically now I come over here, click on Chrome and boom, pops up with Chrome there. And you can see, you can actually, you know, take off the title here. You can leave a title. Basically, if you type in a title here, it'll just say it on the button itself, as you can see. But there's a ton of stuff here and they're always adding more stuff. And one of the cool features is you can actually do a multi-action button. So if you go to multi-action here, slide that over. You can basically set it up so that you do multiple actions, <laughs> hence the name. So let me kind of show you. First, we'll put in a website. Uh, we'll do google.com, I guess, again. And then we'll do, do a delay. So it has time to basically load up the web page. So I'm gonna put like a, let's go with a three second delay. That should be plenty of time for it to pull up the website. And then next up, we'll put in text. So let's say we wanna search for a good PS5. So we wanna search for a good refurbished PS5. We also wanna press enter after sending the message. So now we essentially have this three step process set up with one button press. And let me just go back to the main menu now and you can see our process is set up there. So let's go ahead and click it and see what it does. So it pulls up Google. It waits for a few seconds and then it searches good refurbished PS5 and you can see our searches here. We can see refurbished PS5s from Walmart, Amazon, QVC, all that kind of stuff. So you can like really get into the nitty gritty details here if you want to set up a, a really fancy multi-action thing where it's, you've got like, I don't know, 10 steps or whatever. And then guys, scrolling down here, we actually have some uh, plugins that I downloaded from Ulanzi. For example, an analog clock. If you just want to put a clock on here, you can see it. It'll uh, match what your actual time is. So that's kind of cool to have. 
and then there's even stuff like a like a dice so you know you click on that you put that there you click on it and it'll roll the dice for you in case you just i don't know in case you need that functionality they also have some ones that are very useful like discord plugin an obs plugin actually my favorite one is the speed test plugin you drag that over you click on speed test and it's just going to run a speed test kind of like it does on you know speedtest.net is what what i usually use and now we have the results they display on this little button right here we can see 332 megabits per second down and then 243 up so it's just kind of a nifty little feature instead of having to actually go to a website to to test that feature and guys like i said a lot of these plugins are downloaded from ulanzi so let me go ahead and show you how you do that and how you can find some additional plugins that i don't uh, even i don't have so if you go to marketplace up here you click on that you've got plugins profiles and icons so clicking on plugins you can see we have a bunch of stuff like uh, I got a timer, weather, analog clock. You got Streamlabs in case you use that. You've got Twitch in case you want to stream on Twitch. I personally don't, but uh, you know you got the plugin, so you can do that. TikTok Live Studio, a bunch of just different stuff, and uh, yeah, even Discord. I personally don't use Discord all that often, so I don't really mess with that too much. But uh, the one I use it the most for is OBS, which I'll show you later. And then hopping over to profiles, this is where it gets pretty dang useful. So we have. Uh, specific profile for like Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Premiere, Adobe Photoshop. So I use the Photoshop one a lot because I'm in Photoshop pretty often. You also got them for some other softwares like DaVinci Resolve, which we use as well. Um, so it's just very useful. You can download these profiles. And then hopping over, last but not least, we have icons as well. So you can basically download these pre-made icons. Um, I've already downloaded like the Anaglyph here, which I'll show you how to use, but I'll go ahead and download it again. So basically it'll download. Now going back here, let's say we want to change the, I don't know, for example, the Chrome icons. So we double click on it, it'll pull us to the icon folder where it already downloaded our anaglyph here. And you can cho choose something random. We should actually actually have a Chrome one here. Let me search for it. Uh, yep, so there you have a built-in Chrome one. Click on that. And now you've got this cool little design instead of the, the classic logo and you click on it, it still works just perfectly fine. And guys, another cool thing you can do is go to the settings here. You've got a few different options. So first you can change the brightness of your button. So if you want to reduce them like really dim in case you got a really dark room, you can do that. If you got a bright room, you can turn that up as well. You can also mess with the plugins here, make sure they're up to date. And then we also have the style tab where you can actually change the font. You can change the font size. So for example, I put Chrome and uh, I spelled Chrome wrong, but anyways, I put Chrome there and I put dice there as the titles and you can change the font size. So let's say we want to do 12. It'll make it a little bit larger or you can make it, you know, really small, you know, like six or something. It'll make make it tiny there so you can't really read it. But I like to keep it in the middle at like uh, nine usually. But guys, as you can probably see, your workflow is just getting easier and easier as you uh, go through this process of like, oh, I can string these commands with this one button or I can instead of memorizing com control alt shift K for whatever command I want to do, I can just assign it to a button here and that'll be a whole lot easier. Like guys, actually, I didn't even show you that one, but there's a hotkey function here where you slide it over here and let's say you want to do uh, control C for copy and you like you don't want to do control C you can just assign that there click here and now it's now it's a copy command so very easy to set up and very useful it can save you a lot of time um, and make you more efficient now guys let me go ahead and show you my personal setup and how I use this on a daily basis and so as I showed you there's multiple profiles so we're on profile one which is just a, a blank one I made but default is what I use and you can see I have apps emojis OBS I have my speed test up here I have Photoshop profile down here, a Resolve profile, and also links. So these are the things I use as of right now. I can add more stuff to them. You can also do multiple pages here. I don't have anything on my second page, but I'm kind of honestly, honestly constantly playing with this just to make things a bit more efficient. So let me start with the apps folder here. And this is a folder where I have like Chrome, I got Discord, Teams, Chat, um, I've got Resolve, I've got OBS, I've got Photoshop, Parsec, uh, Calculator, and you can, let's just give you an example. Click on the calculator, pops it up. I can type some stuff in. I want to pull up Chrome pops up real quick and of course you can boot up like photoshop you can just boot up all these there's just it's just a one button click pretty pretty self-explanatory right but going back to the main page i also have emojis uh, these are all emojis that i use pretty often so basically you can just go into let's say actually let me start by opening up a notepad here so click on notepad going back to our emojis these are emojis i use a lot so i can just click on the emoji button and sure enough, pops up on the screen as you would expect. That one's very useful. I also have links here for links to websites I go to a lot, like my own website. Um, I got my you know, GameStop link, of course. I got eBay. I need to add some more for like, uh, DK oldies and stuff like that. Maybe I don't <laughs> I don't know man and guys one of the coolest features that I briefly touched on earlier is the profiles options so Basically, I have a Photoshop profile and a DaVinci Resolve profile if I click on Photoshop here You can see I have a Photoshop uh, file pulled up and I can basically uh, select this stuff and use these tools very easily So let's say I wanted to use the brush icon or a brush tool I click there go ahead and make this a smart object and then I can use my brush or maybe I want to do magic wand or my imitation stamp or pencil or whatever. There's just like a million different options you can use here. Um, very useful because I, I always like come over here and I'm clicking around like, all right, where's the spot healing tool or where's the, 
Um, I, I just click around for a while because I just never remember which exact tool it is. And guys, last but not least, probably my favorite feature integrated into the D200 here is the OBS feature. So I have it integrated into a folder here, click on OBS, and I have a ton of different options for uh, my setup here. That's actually what I'm using personally right now. So if I click upper left-hand corner, I'm going to switch my face cam to upper left. I got upper right as well. I got lower right and then lower left where I've kept it pretty much the entire time. Also got like face cam, screen recording only. Just very useful to be able to press it at a, a glimpse of a button and it works rather than me having to pull it up and click on something different over here or whatever and you can see it gets all funky. So I just have to click it on my, on my D200 here and it's good to go. Now, one of the great things about the D200 is the inexpensive pricing. Now, typically it's $79.99, but here during Black Friday, you can get 20% off, which brings you down to a total of $63.99. So if you guys are looking to streamline your workflow, whether that's for typical PC tasks like Word or Excel, or maybe you're trying to up your content creation game with OBS or Streamlabs, make sure to check out the Ulanzi Stream Deck D200 with a link down below.